Hello everyone and welcome to Directions Live Online. My name is Laura Berman and I am your host for today's webinar. So, welcome to the first part in our six part series all about WebGIS. So in this series, we are focusing on ArcGIS Online and extending the reach of your GIS investment within your organisation and beyond. In today's session, we're focusing on essential first steps. So how to get yourself up and running with ArcGIS Online and ensuring that you've set yourself up for web GIS success. Joining us today to take us through those essential first steps to getting started is Brendan Newell, support and training consultant based in our Adelaide office. We'll also be joined later from Melbourne by Amy Barnes from our solution engineering team. Amy will be online for our Q&A session. But let's get started into this presentation. I'm going to hand across to Brendan now. Perfect. Thank you, Laura, and welcome everyone. It is great to see a lot of familiar names. My name is Brendan and I'll be your guide for today's webinar. So let's jump straight into ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Online is a cloud-based mapping and analysis solution. We can use it to make maps, analyze data as well, to share and collaborate. We have access to workflow specific apps, maps, and even data from around the globe. And even tools for being mobile in the field, online and in offline environments. Your data and maps are stored in a secure and private infrastructure hosted by Esri and can be configured to meet your mapping requirements. So let's have a look at some key benefits of using ArcGIS Online. We can easily share data, maps, apps, and other items with our teams, department, and if we wish, even the general public. We can easily visualize your data spatially through beautiful web maps and apps that can be accessed from anywhere at any time. Even your data can be accessed from a web browser, ArcGIS Pro, smartphones, tablets. We can even go ahead and embed it into your own website. Additionally, there's no need to access a file share for your data. We have ArcGIS Online. Perfect. All we need to do is simply publish our data to ArcGIS Online. Then we can share it with our intended audience. It also makes sharing data with our internal and external clients so easy. All right, first things first, we need to activate our ArcGIS Online organization. Activating is our very first step in our journey to extending our own WebGIS. So we'll go ahead and discuss how to activate and get started with your organizational account. So what will happen first is we have to activate our subscription, nice and easy. So you will receive an email from Esri customer service with an activation link. If you can find the email with the activation link, perfect. If not, because our email sometimes can get buried, you can go ahead and contact customer service for assistance and we can get that link resent, no problem at all. What I do wanna point out here is an important bit is whoever activates the subscription will become the administrator of your ArcGIS Online organization. So if you receive this email and you don't intend to be the administrator, you can simply forward it on to the appropriate person. The next key tip here is when setting up your accounts, be sure to pick an appropriate URL short name. As this URL will be included in all the maps, apps and data created and shared. So you might wanna pick something that forms part of your brand or purpose. Now we've activated our ArcGIS online organization. We can go ahead and add some members. 
Later in the presentation, we'll discuss different user types and which are best for your organization. Next up, we have the home page editor. So we can go ahead and adjust and add organization logos and even colors can be easily changed. So this really impacts the home page look and feel. And we'll have a look at a example later on. What I love is everything is front and maintenance. And apart from small HTML editors for advanced formatting, my favorite bit, if you're someone like myself who doesn't do much coding, there's no coding needed to make these adjustments. Now, let's have a look at understanding credits. So ArcGIS Online service credits, they're currency used across ArcGIS Online, and these are consumed for specific transactions and different types of storage. One of the more common types of storage is storing features, performing analytics, and using premium content. So it is important to note as well, any ArcGIS software that interacts with ArcGIS Online, such as ArcGIS Enterprise, ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Insights, or even ArcGIS Field Maps, has the potential to also use our credits. So most of what we do here does not require credits. For example, using Esri's base maps, exporting data and performing single address or place searches won't actually consume our credits. And in most cases, credit consuming activities can be relatively low cost, but as an administrator, we need to be aware of these. For example, it costs less than five credits to geocode 125 addresses or store two gigabytes of map tile data. So the number of credits you have is actually determined by the user types in your subscription. And at any time you can go ahead and purchase additional credits. But in part two of the series, we'll elaborate on this and check up on how we can manage our credits and even purchase more. So now let's have a look at my great tips for administrating your ArcGIS Online organization. So as an administrator, like we're saying, we're responsible for con configuring our ArcGIS Online organization to meet our organization's needs and structure during setup and even beyond. It is also equally important to regularly maintain our members, items, groups. So this essentially just allows our organization to remain uncluttered and easy to use for our members. Some of these maintenance tasks include monitoring use, and this can really get the most value from ArcGIS Online. So tips for administrating users. This is really important here. So we'll go over some real great tips. First, the members of your organization, they're likely to change over time, right? People come, people go, that's a fact. So user types, they provide us with a real flexible way for us to license the capabilities and apps that people need to do their work in ArcGIS Online and even ArcGIS Enterprise. So the first big tip here is for inviting members. As you roll out or expand access to ArcGIS Online to new members or groups of members, we will need to use the invite members workflow. So this is nice and easy and doesn't require too much time if inviting a single user. But as many of you do, I'm sure you need to invite large groups of members at a single time. If we do need to do this, the perfect way is to upload a CSV file and we can batch invite members. And that will save us a lot of time. And it's not just inviting members that we need to consider. Removing members is also an important part as inviting and 
adding relevant members. When members leave your organization, you'll need to remove their account and decide what to do with their contents because you can't actually delete a member from your organization until all items and groups are either deleted or transferred to another member. So that's really important to know. And ArcGIS Online is pretty useful for that, so it will give you the appropriate messages if you try to delete a user who owns content. Lastly, transitioning to organization specific logins. If your organization decides to use organization specific logins, let's say, uh, for example, SAML logins or OpenID Connect, after initially setting up built in accounts, you must migrate members' items and groups from their original built in account to their new organization specific account. We can't actually convert these accounts over, so that's good to know. So let's now jump into tips for administrating items. These are some real handy tips. First, let's have a look what is an item. So in ArcGIS Online, an item may include data layers, maps, applications, even reference items such as PDFs and images. The items in your organization, like the people, will change over time, such as you know, item information, status, and the ownership. We may need to update these over its life cycle. So, first tip here is to identify old or unused items. And just because an item is old and unused doesn't mean we need to delete it, but it will be consuming our service credits. So we do need to decide, do we want to delete it or keep this item? Out of date items that are still relevant, we can designate as deprecated. So when users access this item, and view the item details page, they get a little icon that shows that it's deprecated. And if an item is, is to be promoted for use, we can designate the item as authoritative. Really useful. All right, next, what I want to have a look at is finding large hosted feature layers. So in ArcGIS Online, we charge storage credits based on the amount of features that are stored. So as the administrator, it's really important to monitor your stored content and to ensure that storage is used effectively and we're not using too many credits. We can also take note if we need to update any service URLs in a web map or update any URLs for service or app items as these may change over time. So for example, URLs for services hosted in ArcGIS Server and locally hosted web apps may change over time when you know servers are retired or renamed. And lucky last here, migrating items between user accounts. So many users will never need to think about this. As an administrator, there are situations where we may need to copy maps, data, or other items from one user account to another. Remembering we talked about the scenario before, when a user leaves the organization, we'll have to migrate their content over. So let's have a look at tips for administrating groups. Groups are great and helps you curate featured content as well as share specific subset of your data to certain teams within the organization. Because, you know, sometimes you just don't want to share your data with the entire organization, right? So here, groups are perfect. Groups themselves do not consume any credits. So maintaining groups is simply good housekeeping, right? 
However, cleaning up groups may also help you clean up old content items that are sitting there consuming our storage credits. Identifying these stagnant groups or groups that are no longer in use, especially public and organizational groups is also recommended as it does reduce the clutter and make the user experience better. So in part two of these webinars, we will elaborate further on how to actually create these groups. And as an admin, it's important for us to monitor the metrics of our organization's users and content, right? So a few tips here. Number one is storage usage. And as an organization's storage and database resource needs, you know, can change over time. During periods of extensive you know, query and editing workload, you may want to upgrade to a premium feature data store to access dedicated database resources for your organization. Next, we have system usage. As an administrator, we might find it useful to monitor some of the following basic statistics. You know, like the number of members in our group, for example, we can see 410. And we can also see the items, new and old. Additionally, we can also view the most active members with the most viewed items and users and groups with the most viewed items. Lastly, but not least important is credit usage. So each organization is going to use cloud resources differently. Thus, they're going to consume credits differently. And us being a good in administrators, we need to keep track of the credit usage. Even heavy use of a cloud service can often offer the best value. Rather than targeting all, in, targeting all instances of heavy credit usage, carefully evaluate reasons for this usage. For example, we can identify you know, duplicate data, redundant data, and the use of services or data that may already be available locally. It's really exciting. So Esri Australia now has a brand new web GIS resource page to help you guys extend the reach of your web GIS and make the most out of your ArcGIS online organization. So let's go ahead and check it out. It's the one-stop shop for extending your reach of your web GIS. The resource center will guide you and your organization on implementing a modern web GIS. So it's going to help you create interactive maps, assist in analyzing your data, even show you how to share your maps for maximum awareness and manage your data. This will be a great resource to show across your organization. And lastly, we have resources to navigate through activating your account, exploring user types available, and extending your work with ArcGIS. So a common question we get is, what user type should I get? So now we've created the ArcGIS user type finder to help you find the correct user type for users within your organization. It's also a really cool example of creating a survey with ArcGIS Survey123. Now, user types. Let's jump into this a little bit more. Organizations, you know, we're going to use, create, and share a wide range of geographic content, including maps, scenes, apps, and layers in different ways. So the ability of individual organization members to access and work with content in different ways depends on the privileges they have in the organization. And now user types allow organizations to control the scope of privileges that can be assigned to members through roles. So organizations assign user types to members based on the members' needs and requirements. So members are able to assign a user type when they're invited into the organization. 
And like we're saying, user type determines the privileges that can be granted to the member through a default or custom role. So that's really powerful. Each type, each user type also includes access to specific apps as we can see on the screen. So it's important to select and assign the correct user type for the user and their job. Organizations are made up of many people, different roles, you know, and they're going to execute unique tasks. User types provide the flexible way for people to license the capabilities and apps they need to do their work in ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. And our user types can be categorized under two groups. So we have foundational and dependent. Foundational user types are core and they may include like the creator and GIS professional user types. They're foundational and they can be purchased independently or paired with any foundation or dependent user types. While dependent user types, they rely on a foundational user type to activate and administer ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, providing that specialized capability to your staff members or team members. So let's have a deeper dive and look at each user type. So we'll have a quick look. First up is GIS Professional. So with GIS Professional, you can build advanced 2D and 3D maps, visualizations, and analysts using ArcGIS Pro. So this has an ArcGIS Pro license built in, beautiful. And we can use it to create, edit, and collaborate, and share content for use in our applications. Next up are creators. They're similar, but they don't include an ArcGIS Pro license. So creators can create, edit content such as maps, apps, perform spatial analysis using the analysis tools in ArcGIS Online, collect data, and collaborate and share content for using apps. So pretty cool, right? So like we're saying, the create and GIS professional, there are foundational user types. Now let's look at our dependent user types. So we have the viewer user type. So pretty self-explanatory, right? So this is just for users who need to view content, but don't need to do any editing. And then we have the editor. So this user type is ideal for users who need access and the edit data that is shared with them and also includes access to a selection of apps. Mobile worker. So this user type is ideal for those users out in the field who may be using Survey123, ArcGIS field maps, or even ArcGIS Quick Catcher. Next up, we have Insight Analysts. So with Insight Analysts, it's designed for those who primarily use insights in their day-to-day -day tasks, right? And they also may need to perform administrative tasks in the organization, but they don't need access to any other ArcGIS applications. And last up is Storyteller. The Storyteller use type allows us to create stories using ArcGIS story maps. And if you haven't had a look at ArcGIS story maps, this is a personal favorite of mine. I would encourage you to check it out. So now that we're familiar with the basics of ArcGIS Online, let's have a look at an example. The ArcGIS Online organization that we'll show today is from the city of Albany. So here we can see the beautiful home page of their ArcGIS Online organization. So in the top ribbon, we can see that they have home, gallery, map, scene, and groups. And then top right, we can see a sign in option. We're viewing this as the public. When scrolling down, you can see the city has made some public applications available. Here, we can see some examples. We can even see dog exercise areas for web application. I know for sure my border collie, Billy, he would love this app. And I know there'll be some dog lovers out there as well. While also clicking on the gallery option in the top ribbon, we can view all of the applications that the city of 
City of Albany have made available. Note here that the gallery will be populated with more content that you're allowed to see once we've logged in. And on the left hand side, we can see the filters for navigating this content easily. All right, to summarize our top three tips that we've covered today. Number one, activating your ArcGIS online. You need to do that to get started. Second, our admin tips to keep your account organized. Number three, understanding users and their roles within your organization. I'll go ahead and hand back to Laura now to see what questions has come through chat. Thank you very much all. Thank you, Brendan. So lots of great information there and we've had lots of questions um, coming through as well. So um, if you haven't already though, submitted your question, there's still time. So you can do that in the GoToWebinar panel. So um, just to kick off, the first one I've got here is from Stephen who asks, um, our organization's admin is no longer in our team and we'd like to activate ArcGIS online. How can we do this? Brendan, I might hand that one to you. Yeah, sure, that, that's actually a really popular question. So first off, no problem at all, you can email clientadoption at esriaustralia.com .au, and we can just resend the activation email to the new administrator to activate. Away we go. But if your subscription has already been activated and say your current admin has left the organization, um, what we need to do is we need to do an admin swap. So if you send us an email, we can go ahead and organize a new admin to be assigned in your organization. I would recommend though for organizations to have more than one admin because this admin swap, it could potentially take some time to action. And if you have more than one admin, you can perform those administrative tasks if someone's going to be away. Uh, I hope, hope that answers your question there. Awesome, thanks. Um, next question um, is from Natasha asking, can I limit what my creator user type can do? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually glad you mentioned this. So not only can you limit a user's privileges by managing the roles, we can even create custom roles to meet your organization needs. And this can limit a creator's privileges, but it can also elevate their privileges as well, if needed. Okay, great. Um, next question that's come through and um, Amy, I might get you to answer this one. So welcome back back online. So the questions come in from, from Alice. She, she says, I like the example you showed of City of Albany. Um, it is, it's gorgeous and great to see um, Rebecca from City of Albany on the line as well. Um, so the question, is that type of page set up out of the box? Um, is there HTML customization available for web page setup? All right, yeah, thank you. Uh, I really do like the City of Albany's ArcGIS Online page. So there is an editor to create your homepage for your ArcGIS Arch Online organization, which includes a flexible set of components. This is easy to use as it has those options that allow you to create a captivating first impression of your site. You can also use HTML in other spaces within ArcGIS Online when using a rich text editor to achieve those map pop-ups and elements within many of the configurable apps that are available. Thank you, Laura. Okay, thanks, Amy. Um, okay, um, next question that came through was from Roger, um, who it's actually a two part. So the first part, um, and Amy, this one I might um, ask you, um, can you explain how API request unit limits are applied to an ArcGIS Online subscription and how can they be monitored by the administrator? Yeah, thank you, Roger. That's a really good question. Um, I want to give you the best answer possible. So I'll do some research after this webinar and then get back to you with that answer. Okay, great. Um, a question from, from Jim um, asking, are credits used if you have an enterprise account? Um, Amy, I know we were talking about this the other day. Yeah, so for the most part, no. Uh, credits will only be consumed if you connect your ArcGIS Enterprise to an ArcGIS Online account. 
and that's more for any of your premium subscriber items that you make use of. Credits will also be consumed for some of the tools that you use in ArcGIS Pro, and those are just some of the more unique and intensive tools that are available, but there aren't many of those. Okay, great. Um, next question from Susanna. Um, Brendan, I might get you on this one. So do we get notified, um, e.g. a direct email to administrator or pop-up when we next log in, when we're getting low in credits? So yeah, is there any notification around low credits? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I do know when your credit code is zero, you get a little banner notification. But I'll have to follow up on what the rules are around when you're getting low on ArcGIS Online service credits. So yeah, we'll get back to you on that one. Okay. Um, next question from Alad. So asking, so again, more about credits. And I know um, Amy is going to be um, going through a bit more around the user types and credit uses next week. Um, but we'll, this is a really great question. So he goes, um, so Alad asks, what happens if you go over the assigned credits from overuse or too much storage? So, you know, are, are credits renewed yearly or lump sum that we need to pay for once we've used all the assigned credits? Yeah, so like as Laura said, we will cover that in next week's session in a bit more detail. But there are payment plans and you can also top up your credits at any point. Okay, yeah, and it would be yeah good to know what happens when um, you do get to the end or use or go over. Um, okay, so next question. Um, so this one, I'm pretty sure we'll be covering it in um, our last um, part six, which is about sharing data with um, other organisations. Um, but I'll, yep, definitely you can, you can set up ArcGIS Online to share with other organisations. So make sure you come to um, part six where we talk a bit more about that. Okay, um, you see us, how many total admin can be added? So how many admin admin role can you have? So I can answer this one. Okay, yep. Uh, so you can add as many creator users or GIS professionals that you want to your Arcturus, um organization and any of them can be administrators. So as many as you want and as many um, that creator licenses that you can get, that's as many ad admins as you can get. And yes, they can delete and add other admins as well. Okay, great. Um, next question from Michael. Um, is there a list of tools in ArcGIS Pro that consume credits or maybe even just anything about like general credit consumption? If you find the tool, the, the help page with a specific tool at the bottom, it will alert you that if it does use any credits, so the help page for each tool will, will indicate that. Um, I'm not sure if there is a list of all of those ones that use credits, but I can have a look as well. Okay, great. Julie has a request. Um, Brendan, can you show how you viewed the credit usage again? So if you have that up. Yeah, absolutely. Give me one moment. And I also do believe that Amy will be going through next week on more about looking at uh, review and credit usage. That, that's pretty important. Um, but if I could share my screen there, Laura, and I can bring that slide back up. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Uh, there you go. So I do believe Amy will be going a bit more of a deeper dive in this. But if you are, are an ArcGIS Online Administrator, you can have these tools to review your credits and you can even print out like a credit report showing you where all your credits are used. And in this little screenshot, we can see that we've got our storage, we've got our analytics, and we've got our subscriber content. We do have, I know we do have a number of great blogs around this, so we can go ahead and send those out as well. I definitely yeah. recommend reviewing those. Okay, that would be great. Um, we are sending out the recording as an email um, early next week, so anyone who's registered will get that. So um, that would be great. We'll make sure that we update that email with any resources that are relevant to that as well. So um, thanks for that, Brendan. I'll just come back 
to my screen here. Um, Elki asked a question. So basically they have um, a maximum um, number of users, but they have seasonal viewers. So people who sort of, who come and go. So um, do either of you have sort of a solution about how you can just easily add in um, viewers for certain web maps? Maybe you don't even need to be, have a specific user. I'll, I'll answer this one. For um, seasonal viewers, you can purchase a small amount of pure viewer licenses, and then that way you can have that security that you add them to certain groups and share your applications to those certain groups. And the best part about uh, user types that you purchase is that you can unassign and reassign multiple times as well. That's also will be covered next week about what you can do to change and change your user types and your roles as well. So it would almost essentially be a floating license where if you have a seasonal work of three months, you can assign them a license and then once they leave, you can revoke that license and assign it to the next person. Okay, um, excellent. Um, well, thank you. Very comprehensive. And Amy, I look forward to next week. I'll take it there'll be lots of questions around credits and it's really, um, really important. There's like a lot to cover there. So credits and different users, so I really appreciate it. Um, but we've come to the um, the end of end of our questions here. So thank you everybody for submitting your question. Um, but for now, thank you again, Brendan and Amy um, for the session today. And thank you everyone for joining us. And we'll see you next week for um, the next Directions Live Online. <laughs>